Hi there, it's Phil again. I'm going to show you now some Typeinator shortcut controls and how to put in your own shortcut expansions into the Typeinator application. So let's get straight on to it. So here we have the Typeinator interface just here and I'm working on a set called the demonstration set. Now this set is part of the abbreviation sets that I have and the abbreviation sets are shown on the left hand side of the interface as you look here and you can turn them on or off as you want so you might have an abbreviation in one set that is very similar to an abbreviation in another and in that situation where there's a clash then Typeinator will tell you and it will give you a little uh, exclamation mark and say that it's actually used in one of the other sets so your choice is then to either change the uh, abbreviation or to just turn it off uh, or leave it so that the upper abbreviation takes precedence so because my demonstration set here is the toppermost of my abbreviations then that's the one that would take precedence if I clicked and dragged that set down to the bottom then we might see that some of the sets have this yellow icon with uh, an exclamation mark next to them which shows that if I show this and I go DT it says down at the bottom there it says disabled by DT in the set of Typeinator shortcuts so I've got a Typeinator shortcuts list there which also contains DT which may or may not exactly match the expansion that I have but only one of those can be used obviously um, so what I would now do is I would either just ignore it and say well it's actually the same expansion so I can just leave it there or I can delete that, that expansion and the way I would do that is I would highlight the expansion in the abbreviations section of the interface and then go down to the minus button and remove that selected icon however I don't want to do that I'm actually going to reselect the demonstration set click and drag it to the top so that all of the abbreviations in this series are the ones that will be applied whilst I'm showing you how to work it Typically what I would then do, of course, is I can simply turn off using that tick mark those abbreviations so that then all of the abbreviations in my other series will work. OK, so it's very easy to turn off a full set of abbreviations. Now, if I want to add an abbreviation, it's very simple. You go down to this plus button just here and you click on that and once you've clicked on that it says add a new replacement and so in this area here you type in your abbreviation so if I type in HLO for instance and then I go to the section below that that's where my expansion will be so I could then type hello comma uh, how are you question mark and that's what the expansion will type out for me once I type in HLO there is another couple of areas that are of interest though and they are in here where you've got some rules relating to the expansion itself so right now we've got case does not matter and to expand at the word break now what case does not matter means is that uppercase or lowercase if I type in HLO in upper or lowercase it will still expand and show me this expansion um, and it also says expand that word break so if I type in HLO on its own it will just have HLO there until I type in the next breaking space so that could be a space or it could be a dash it could be a variety of different things so let's show you how that would actually work on the uh, on a, an example so if I just remove all of these if I now type in HLO 
on the screen. If I now tap the space button, it will automatically replace it with my hello, how are you expansion. So we've seen, we see this already in this system. Let's move this just up so you can see that. What we can now do is if I, this was with case does not matter. So let's just type into that area just to prove that the case doesn't matter. If I type uh, shift H, shift L and then lowercase O, and I hit the space bar, it still types it out exactly as we've typed it in the expansion area of the software. Now, one thing to look out for is if you are in caps lock, then it will type it out based upon the caps situation on your computer. So if you've got caps lock on and I do HLO space, it will type it out in uppercase because it's typed it with the caps lock on the keyboard so be careful of that so even though it says case does not matter here it kind of does if your caps lock is on okay so let's choose a different uh, option for the case does not matter if I say case must match and this is the situation where again if I type HLO in lowercase we know it works but if I return and type in uh, HLO in uppercase and space then there's no expansion and that's because the case must match option is selected there okay finally in that same area we have a case effects expansion so now if I go back down to my shortcut area and I type in HLO space, we know that that works, but it's, it's come out with a lowercase h, which is a bit interesting. Uh, if I type in uh, capital H L O, and that's with the space bar, with the shift key held down and space, it then types it in in uppercase, all of it. Okay, so that's the way that the case effects expansion option works now I more or less never choose that I actually more or less always has case does not matter that's my preferred route for my expansions now the other thing that we've got in that area is the expand that word break so what I was typing in let me just remove those I was typing in HLO and then you can't see it, but a space bar makes it expand. If I go down again and do HLO and a dash, it's considered a word break, but it types in the dash for me. If I do HLO and then uh, maybe a slash, then it does that, but it adds the slash afterwards. So there's a few different ways that that would work. If I just go back and do HLO space, then we can see that the cursor in the window has moved a space on. So that's considered a word break. There is another way of using this. And let me just very quickly remove those for us again and go down to the where it says expand at word break. Just there, we have got an option that says expand on match. And I commonly use this when I've got a abbreviation which is definitely never going to be typed somewhere else. So if you go expand on match, you'll see that what happens as well is up in the interface just up here, we have this lightning icon that matches this expand on match icon. If I change it back here, sorry, to expand at word break, then the icon up here also goes to this same icon that you see at the expand at word break option. So anyway, let's go back to expand on match. And this time we are going to type in HLO. And that's all I'll type in. It'll be so quick, HLO. And it also, I hit the P by mistake. But if I go down to HLO, 
it automatically types in that expansion and it leaves the cursor right next to the last letter of the expansion. So in my expansion area, I had nothing else after that U. If I put in a space after U in the expansion area, you can see just there that there is a, a gap in there. And now I type into the new window HLO, you'll see that the cursor here you can see in there that there is a space after the question mark. So it does match exactly what you have in the expansion area of the Typeinator interface. So I'll just go back there. Hopefully that's clear to you. So that is the most important two things that you'll see when you're setting up your new Typeinator expansions. Keep a close eye on expand on match and expand at the word break because that is really important and it can really help you in getting your expansions to work much more quickly for you as well. But you'd also find that adding a, a word break will help you get even more expansions where you might want a variety of different things typed. I can help you with more Typeinator expansions in the near future. So keep an eye out on this channel and you'll see some more tips as we go along. Thanks for watching.